you will use the thin brush or any kind of brush that is uh, that you feel that your pet is comfortable with. I recommend a thin brush and brush it all across. If you can see, I'm uh, brushing uh, to, the, to the direction of how the hair is flowing down. You can raise up and lift the hair and start combing for you. So while you're brushing, I would recommend that you teach your uh, dog to uh, practice a stand command so it's easier for you to brush it. Some of the problem areas are below the ears. So ensure that instead of using a thin brush, you can use the comb and comb it down. Same area, the same thing. So once you're done with the body hair, then ensure that there are uh, mostly knots formed below here. So keep it all down with the leg. Start if you think there are knots here, again you have to remove the knots with the slicker brush. At home, uh, you can use a slicker brush and when you break up the knots, as the knots are removed, use the comb to pull the entire thing from the skin and out. See, it's very easy. See, the other part where uh, knots and tangles are formed mostly for long head dogs is if you see the little muscle here and the hair is formed or the tangles are formed mostly here and the same procedure needs to be followed you brush it with a little brush and then you use the comb and take it out let you see when I'm brushing or when I'm combing, I'm taking it to the direction of the I'm not going against it. So, uh, for combing a long hair dog, I have used a sleeker brush which you can use to detangle or you can remove the mats. 
Then I have used a pin brush to comb the entire body and press. I have used a comb just to ensure that every hair is detangled and it is free. So, uh, why is brushing important? It's not only for long hair talks. Uh, we should brush uh, not only long hair talks but also short coat talks. Most of the people will think that when you take a short coat talks, you don't have to brush them regularly. But I recommend that you brush them daily because it allows you to remove the dead hair. Uh, the natural oil of the dog spreads evenly. And if there are any conditions or skin issues like a bacterial fungal infection, you can check them on a regular basis. And most importantly, when the dogs go out and uh, you have to check them, you can check them on six and six on a regular basis. So uh, just to remember, uh, you, you should choose your tools, your brushes according how comfortable your dog is. There are bristle brushes, there are pin brushes, there are sleepers, and there are combs. You will understand on how you have to use each particular equipment on your dog based on the comfort level. For example, uh, this dog, he, I, I, I can figure out that he is comfortable with the pin brush, so I'm using the pin brush all over and I'm combing him down, and followed by the comb, which has helped me to remove all the knots and mats, and also check on the skin condition if there are any kind of infection or there are any ticks and fleas or mass or any kind of parasites that have come into the dog. So next uh, we'll move on to de-shedding. De-shedding is particularly important for dogs with double coats. Uh, for example, uh, you have a husky, you have a retriever, or uh, you have a shepherd, or you have a beagle. Those kinds of dogs need de shedding. De shedding is done for double coat dogs. So, what happens in double coat dogs is uh, they have two layers of coats one is the undercoat and one is the top layer. So, you have to ensure that. The undercoat is cleaned and removed on a regular basis. So uh, I will show you. Uh, this shedding can be used uh, once or twice in a week, and uh, for that we need a de shedder. So you get different sizes of de shedders. For example, this is a small de shedding tool for a smaller dog, and. Uh, we have this one for larger dogs. This can be used for a husky, a labrador, a retriever, a shepherd, or a husky. So, uh, brushing, as I've said, is a daily, it's on a daily basis, but this shedding you guys can do uh, in preferably once or two, two times in a week. So, how do you de-shed? You have the de-shedding brush and you start here. See, if you can see, I have the partitions here and start de-shedding from here. So I'm showing it up on here, but that's how we're gonna do that to share it. With the partitions, just start it. How much of hair is come up? Start and close it. 
सुरेश लाल है So I have used the deshaler on him. So uh, generally, uh, deshelling is a process where you have to run the entire process and it runs for at least 15 to 20 minutes at one shot. And considering a bit of like a husky or a retriever or a labrador, it takes at least half an hour. So, uh, why is this sharing important? Uh, if you have a double coat dog, you can see there's an under layer, and uh, many people complain that my dog is doing a lot of hair and I want to shave him off. That, that's not the correct way of doing every dog shed, and it's a natural process. Uh, keeping that in mind, you have to do certain basic things at home, like daily brushing um, and t shirting once or twice in a week to ensure that the coat is healthy and you have a dog on screen. So next uh, we'll come to the dental hygiene of dogs. So dental hygiene can be start as soon as they are puppies and uh, Infuse daily brushing in your dog's teeth. So here you see a lot of kind of a yellow accumulation here. And generally, what we call a plug is a huge accumulation of bacterial infection. Okay, we're gonna brush it. So, uh, dental uh, hygiene is a part of the daily grooming routine and I'll teach you how to brush your dog on a daily basis. So I'm using a doggy toothbrush and and this goes easily and fits your finger and uh, I'm using dental paste Okay, I'm not sure how that is going to happen. Still, you see. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Five. 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 Do you see? 
So Bella is my dog. She's a rescue and she's six years old. Okay. Brush all throughout. Okay. She likes it. So, uh, no worries if you've not started brushing your dog every day, but uh, for now, you can start uh, brushing it. It's very important that you maintain the hygiene, but if you figure out there is starter, uh, there is formation here, I recommend that you go visit a dentist, have a cleanup done, and then follow up on a regular dental hygiene. So next we have what you can do at home is clean your ears. So every dog here has to be clean uh, once, twice in a week. So uh, I'll teach you. Bella is due for grooming. So uh, here, her ears are. Slightly stinky and dirty, but I'll teach you how to clean your dog's ear. So it's very easy and very simple. Uh, so now we have the product called Fiotic, and what you do is, Bella hates it, but still, Bella, put the drop here. Ah, Bella? Yeah. Okay. She hates your feeling, but. Okay. Yeah. This is the job here. I love it. So, uh, you can use your buds at home. Get the earbuds for dogs uh, at any pet store, you can use them. So, ensure that you move the earbuds very gently, clean it inside, very slow. Okay. Very slow, very gentle. So, 
I generally use the additional cotton swab and just clean the ears and if you're not comfortable rolling your fingers then just use the butts and clean the ears. So uh, her ears are clean now and there are no signs of, so you need to check uh, if there is a smell in the ear, uh, doesn't smell normal, there is a smell, uh, there is a foul smell, so that could be probable infection which you need to show to your veterinarian but on a daily basis or uh, twice in a week, it's very important that you clean the ear and check for any kind of infection. There, uh, and there are some extra hair here. So, uh, it's, if you want, you can do that. Like, which is in our terms, it's called as ear hair plucking. There, are, there is a powder for ear hair plucking. So, put them in the ears. Leave it for two, three minutes and start. Well, I'm using my hands because of the practice which I've gone through. But if you're not comfortable using your hands, you can use a tweezer and just start plucking the hair, which allows uh, the constant airflow in the ears. And until it's healthy and free of infections. So I clean this portion, it's thick and span, and there are no signs of infection. So what you need to do on a daily routine basis is check for any kind of infection if, you're, if there is any kind of all smell which doesn't smell the normal, get it checked by a veterinarian and also practice to clean the ears at least twice in a week. So next, uh, most of the uh, Dogs, I mean, all of the dogs go out for the daily walks, and a lot of pet parents ask what should I do after they come out from the walk because their paws are dirty, um, they can contract, ticks and fleas, a lot of dust around, a lot of questions that comes out, uh, and some some may, uh, some people ask me, uh, I can bathe my dog twice a day or twice a week. Uh, once in a week, so that all the dirt and uh, grime in the dog's body is gone and they start smelling fresh because one of the concerns for a lot of my parents is the body odor. Uh, so uh, we have solutions for that also. Uh, every day, uh, when you take your dogs out for a walk and you think they start smelling, and uh, you can use a dry shampoo. So, uh, this is a good product uh, uh, from Natural Remedies, uh, it's called Fresh Me Up and uh, this can be used for puppies too and uh, it is suitable for daily use. These are my favorites, so uh, this is very simple and what you all need to do is, oh it contains uh, vitamin E and aloe vera too and so what you need to do is and it's a foam in shampoo and rub it on your so I'm showing a portion on how you can use it and uh, well, I'm not, you can towel dry. 
as a bookstore to the store. Take some more of it and apply all over into the pause. It's a foam with shampoo or a foam with dry shampoo. So, rubbing the entire body and Okay, very simple. The smell fresh, and then uh, for Bella, I'm using a rake tool, and how I'm brushing it on my hands. Part, 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 one part, one part. And do it. Or you can just pull it down. So you have to do it on the entire body. See? Cool. It's super fresh and it just smells great. So part of your daily routine, you can use any kind of uh, dry shampoo, apply them over and brush them down and they'll be super fresh. So next we have, which most of the dogs don't like, my, my dogs don't like them too. And that's the most difficult part of it, which is nail trimming. Sit, stay. So, uh, it is advisable. So, to check on your dog scenes. So, as I said, Bella was too for grooming. So, her nails have. So now you see uh, there is a division here. So it is a pink part and there's a white part. So if you don't cut your dog's nail, the follicle keeps growing along with it. And if it grows too much while they walk, you can hear the tuck tuck sound and basically it hurts them. They don't they can't for some dogs there are natural filing, but if your dog is not too much of outdoor dog, he doesn't run too much, he doesn't play too much outside, and there's no natural filing of the nail, you have to ensure that you cut the nails on a uh, regular basis. So, how I'll teach you how to cut the nails. Uh, you can start if your dog is not old and uh, still in a puppy. What you have to do is lift the leg like this and cut the nails. So you cut portion by portion so that you ensure that there is no bleeding. So black nails are slightly difficult to cut. It's the same process that I'm telling you. So you hold the dog here, lift the leg. And you can see the curves in the cut. Voila, stay. Stay, Voila. Stay, Voila. So, yeah, see, I've cut it. 
still the part where you can see and you should not go beyond that otherwise it starts bleeding so we will do the rest of the nails hello mama no stay Okay, so now when you cut the nails, there are sharp edges, the sharp edges which you know uh, can hurt your skin, and in that case, you can use a drummer and start filing it. And so then it is just keep it. You know. It's like for humans how we have pedicure and manicure and after the nail is cut and we start filing it, see, it's become as soft and it doesn't hold the skin at all. Again, use the dremel. And, yeah. Stay there. Press there. Press there. Depending on your dog, uh, I've finished, <laughs> finished very soon because Bella is kind of used to it. But if you're introducing the uh, filing or uh, a drum to your dog, it will take some time. But once they get used to it, uh, at home you don't have to use a nail clipper, uh, you can use the drum and file your dog's nails so that they are always clean, neat, and they are always comfortable. So, we are finished with uh, the nail cutting and filing. The another essential tip of the paw is to keep the, see there are extra hair in the paw pen. So, uh, it's very important that uh, you trim that off banana. We trim it off at least the paw pen level so that uh, they don't lose grip and they don't lose slip around and and the hygiene of the foot is maintained. So this is the place where most of the infections come. So the foot hy hygiene for dogs is very very important. So I'm uh, if so I'm using a Andes trimmer with red thirty, but uh, if you don't have this at home, you don't have to worry. Um, I'll show you with scissors because these are all professional trimmers and uh, I'll show you with scissors how you have to do it. So, so lift the paw and start cutting it. This the extra. And the 
behind for so stay uh, ensure that you don't lift the leg like this keep it at a very comfortable level and start This is equally important for all four dogs. We are single core, double core. Okay. So once this is done, four dogs like Cocker Spaniels, they have a lot of hair in between the paws. So what you have to do is brush them reverse. Press them in reverse and whatever the extra hair. Bella? So press in reverse and Bella say lift it up to a comfortable position. Lift the hair up and cut. So if you pause, lift it, lift it like this. Maintainer, it starts bleeding. So, on a daily maintenance basis, you can use pop up creams. So, my two personal favorite is the healing pop up from oil wash, and I also uh, like positive UV smoke from Captain Zach. So, it's very simple to use. Take, take a bit of it. Uh, I'm showing you guys everything in one shot, but it's not necessary that you do everything together. You can do one thing at a time. Maybe brushing in the morning and Back from home after work, you can pay attention to the paw, the nails, and start taking care of it. Because if the paw pads are packed, uh, it hurt them a lot, and most of the time it starts bleeding, and you will really have any Okay, and rub it. Like this. Okay, and we are done. So, this is for one paw that we have done. And next, what we'll have is uh, eye cleaning. So for her, we don't need eye cleaning on a regular basis. But if you have a Yorkshire or you have a Shih Tzu, Bella, what do you want to do? Okay, okay. Okay, you're the next. Relax, have a seat. So for dogs like these and bugs, what you do is eye cleaning is a very essential part of the daily hygiene and it's required that you keep the 
hair, hair trimmed around the eye, for example. Spike has got the hair trimmed around the eye. So, if you see there is accumulation, or spike doesn't have, so, so you can use a wet, wet wipe and dump it for some time. And then the accumulation becomes a bit softer. You can use it for like this. And brush them. And brush them. Uh, eye issue is a very common problem in shoes, and uh, as you can see, there it's a little bit of hair trimmed around the eye area, so there are a lot of air pollution at this point and it uh, causes medical attention. Uh, that's on a rare case, but if you want to keep uh, keep your shih tzus or your yakshas uh, clean and free from infection, so have to do a daily maintenance. Spikes it. Oh, oh. <laughs> sit, 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 sit. Spikes it. Okay. So as I said, put the wet wipe, dab it, or any kind of ear cleaner to make the information really softer, and then brush it up on daily. Stick and span, you can see the eyes are turning and both uh, sides. Okay, spike. Ah, uh, so I have. Spoken about uh, most of the uh, daily routines of dog grooming at home. Uh, I get a lot of grooming cases where dogs are matted because there's a difficulty to comb them uh, because uh, some 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 lady tells me that they don't allow to comb, they don't allow to brush, but I suggest that. Uh, if they are puppy, we introduce them in the right stage, and if they are already grown up and finding it difficult uh, to groom them at home, consult a professional groomer, learn how to reinforce grooming on them because grooming is very essential. But how we groom ourselves every day, which is also important that we see them uh, our pets on a regular basis because it is also important that they bring a lot of and we want to keep them uh, from away from any kind of infestations or infections, uh, we should always, on a regular basis, groom it all. So, to wrap it up, uh, I have spoken about dog brushing. There are different kinds of brushes that you uh, can use on dogs. Uh, this is a pin brush, which I've shown you. Uh, and uh, it can be used on any dog. Uh, they, are, they are mostly comfortable with this, and uh, it, it just doesn't have sharp edges, and we can just comb them on a regular basis. And then, if they are long coats, use a comb to remove all the mass and tangles. And we have a rake tool also, if you want, uh, you can have them at home. But if you are Brushing them on a regular basis, you don't have to use so many brushes, one for the kind of brushes is fine. So the red tool also helps you to crack out the knots and mats. And then I have talked about the de shader. So de shaders, depending on what size of dog you have, double coats, single coats, you can use for everybody. And you can pick up the uh, de shader based on the size of the dog. After brush, after well, teaching you how to brush your dogs on a daily basis, the next important thing is the dental hygiene, where you have to brush your dogs every day and at 
to prevent them from any kind of infection or tartar formation. The sooner is the better. I have next told you about the meal grinding. Uh, meals are very important. Uh, don't worry if you can't do uh, the entire lot in once. Take bit by bit and start teaching your dog to relax during them because most of the dogs get crazy and they don't like the paws to be touched, they don't like the nails to be touched. Teach them at home one thing at a time. Uh, meals are also part of daily hygiene and routine. And after the walks, uh, if you think your dog smells and is taken up, picked up dust and grime and a lot of things, apart from brushing, I told you what you can use. Uh, you can use a dry shampoo. Uh, so I've got good results from Brush Me Up. So this is Brush Me Up. Uh, Put that in the home base and it can be used for purposes as well. For crack paws and under the maintenance of the paws, you can use the oil wash to fall down and positively smooth from that and that. So <laughs> That's all from me. This is the basic uh, hygiene routine that you have to maintain on a daily basis. And if you have any questions or uh, you want to know more, so you can write to me directly. Uh, you can write your questions by text and I would like to thank you all for participating and patiently listening to the simple basic routine.